Hey, welcome back YouTube. Today I'm bringing you a special project that I've been working on for a little bit. And this video specifically is the setup of your Epson ET2800 printer. The first thing that you're going to want to do after unboxing your product is you will take the user's manual that has the QR code on it, take a picture of that on your phone, and it's going to take you directly to the Epson Smart Panel app. All right, so once you have that pulled up, just go ahead and download the application. Another thing that I'd like to mention in this video is prior to downloading the Epson Smart Panel app, I actually already had the printer plugged in and I believe it prompts you to start your initial setup. So from here, obviously I am downloading the app straight from the Google Play Store. Once you have everything signed in, the application is going to ask you if you want product support. I went ahead and hit no because I figured that this was referencing to some sort of software initialization. And I just went ahead and did the create new Wi-Fi connection. And so here are the following steps of how that works. Something that I would like to mention in this video as well is from start to finish taking your printer out of the box and having a pre-designated space to set it up. The entire setup process is probably going to take you somewhere from 20 to 30 minutes. My mileage varies a little bit differently because I was recording the video and wasn't exactly keeping a strict timer on it but from what I saw in the scrub list of creating the full mix down and knowing that Epson has about an 11 minute initialization that's where I came up with the metric. Before getting into this next part of the video, there is something that I do want to make mention of, and it's that Epson gives you an absolute boatload of steps to take on this because I had my attention focused on three different things between the phone, uh, the printer, the camera settings, the lighting, the audio, and I was a little bit overwhelmed trying to read through this list right here that I'm showing you right now on screen. But I will say, if you take the time and just follow those directions, you're going to be okay. I just want to reiterate on Epson's warning here of where it's telling you not to use your print system before putting in the ink. The reason that this is important is because odds are it's probably going to damage the motor that is inside of the system that is cycling the liquid all the way back to the print head. 
Another honorable mention that I want to make at this point in the video is that whenever you're putting the printer together and setting it up, you're actually going to use a pretty good majority of your black ink bottle for sure. About 20 to 25 percent is going to be used just to saturate that ink head to get it ready for your first initial prints. Okay, stop. We're gonna see if you've been paying attention to the video because one of the things I put in here is that there's a certain ink filling sequence and I don't want you to make the same exact mistake that I did. And if you can actually see in the background on that top right hand corner, you see a little bit of blue back there. And what that is, is it's not paper towels, no. It's something a little bit beefier, it's shop towels. Because I'm used to the old world of printers where you could very easily have spills and leakage whenever you're trying to refill the system or do something uh, such as putting a giant bottle of ink into a cartridge where it does not belong. Now, I will admit this was a mistake and I wasn't doing it for filming purposes, but now you get to see it in the first hand view. Even though I had all the instructions, I had everything that I could have in my possession to do the correct filling sequence, somehow, some way, I figured out how to do it wrong. And as you can see, I've spent well over maybe 30 seconds trying to figure out why I can't get ink into the bottle. And up. Uh, there it is. Is that the inclination? Oh, yeah, it sure is. Yep, I figured it out. I said, man, this thing is just not going in correctly. And so just take your time when you're setting these things up because the last thing that you want to have is a leak whenever you're trying to fill your printer. Now, I will give you some peace of mind with this and even Epson puts it onto the packaging. You're probably not going to spill out any of that ink because I'm assuming that there's a receptacle in there that punctures where the hole is at to let the ink flow out. Um, so it's a very, very, very seamless setup. The last printer that I was migrating from was the Canon Pixima and just taking out some cartridges and playing with it, um, my hands had happened to get pretty dang dirty. And so that is why the paper towels were still sitting on the table because whenever I'm messing with printers, I know it can be a really messy job. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the special guest of the show, and that is going to be the Epson 522 Cyan Blue Liquid. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, you're about 85% done with the entire setup of the Epson system.
All right, how about it? We should all give a warm round of applause to that Cyan 522 bottle. He will be here all week filling every printer in the area. I want to take a minute to congratulate you because if you've made it here, you're on the home stretch of your printer setup. For all intents and purposes, uh, their application is actually a pretty good system. I think it can be a little uh, convoluted because it does look like there's a lot of steps. Some of it is really repetitive. And I would also like to make mention that whenever I was doing the filling sequence of the printer, I believe I had to go back through the app steps to get back to the filling sequence and go through all of that to get back into the initial setup of the printer for the first time of it being pushed onto my local network. So it looks like we're wrapping up the final steps here. I believe one of the last buttons that you'll have to press is pushing it straight onto your network and getting it onto your Wi-Fi. I will be making some more videos about this Epson ET2800. If you're interested in things like this, please check out our channel at Retro Realtor Team, of course, on YouTube of all places. And if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel.